Okay, this is in response to Randy's response. Is causation always deterministic? Uh, which was a response to Gary's response to Randy's original post, which was non-determinism in Hodgkin-Huxley equation. So, okay, Randy, I understand that you're primarily trying to show that there is some sort of deterministic, non-deterministic process going on in our brains um, because you realize that's kind of half the battle or if you can't win that battle then there's no way to win the free will argument so okay that's understood and you know that non-deterministic properties aren't necessarily free will um, like the square root of 4 is 2 or negative 2 um, that would be, you know, multiple solutions to an equation, but I think sometimes mathematics doesn't always work out or really translate to real life physics. Like, for instance, just say maybe your neurons somehow take the absolute value of whatever the answer is. So, like, if it was negative 2 is the answer, it would just be 2 either way. I mean, I don't know. Maybe something like that. Um, some equations, which you made me realize um, once I looked at it, totally made sense, but some might have like an infinite solution or an infinite number of solutions. But okay, so maybe how would, how would your body go about picking an answer? other than maybe some kind of random process. Um, so, but somehow, somehow you think randomness could have something to do with free, free will and I never really understood that train of thought. In fact, one would think that randomness would be the antithesis of free will. I mean, if you just think about it for a few minutes, what is it about randomness that could possibly be anything to do with free will? So I kind of look forward to the video that you say you're going to make about randomness and how that could relate. Because I don't understand. Um, okay. So also, I think I just don't really like overly simplistic, like real life examples in general when debating something that's totally abstract like the idea of free will or how brains work um, brains working isn't abstract but when you're really talking about the getting down to the neurons and you know it starts to kind of feel abstract so if you just use everyday life examples like some things just make me angry and it's deterministic because it's subconscious like I it's, first of all, it's not totally subconscious. I've brainwashed myself into, you know, learning to be not get angry at certain situations that would normally just automatically make me angry. I mean, so I don't I think that's a very good example to begin with. But or the pie cutting example. Um, yeah, the pie cutting example has more than one solution to wanting to cut the pie in half could cut it this way or this way like you said sure but it's not just that's so overly simplistic like when you go to cut a pie you, you know you can decide I'm gonna cut it this way there's still trillions or however many processes that have to happen before you actually do that it's incredibly complicated it has to do with whatever position we happen to be standing in. We might do it at a slightly different angle. Uh, it's interrelated with whatever else is going on in the room at the time. Um, whatever we have in our memory we might be thinking of. Remembering how to hold a knife. We might be doing it slightly this way or that way. Uh, we have memories of our mother cutting a pie. How did she really do it? Um, and not to mention like every nerve and muscle in your arm how 
how your body's reacting when you go to like pull the knife down. I mean, all kinds of stuff is going on. You're worried about, I mean, subconsciously worried about standing up straight and not falling over. And I think it's just so immensely complicated. Every tiny little thing we do or think about, or even we're thinking we're just making a really simple decision that it feels like we're just feels like we think we know what free will feels like sorry Gary I still don't know how to say that um anyway so okay enough of that okay and predictability has nothing to do with whether something is deterministic or not I mean just flat out Everything in nature is, I think, could be explained with chaos theory, and most of it is not predictable at all. Um, it, it's deterministic, a completely deterministic. I mean, I hope you understand that chaos, chaotic processes, or the d d definition of chaos theory is that it's, part of the definition is that it's deterministic. Uh, it's is determined as it goes though it's not something that you would predict so yeah predictability has nothing to do with whether something's deterministic and chaos is deterministic I guess those are two points I want to make sure you un understand um, okay so to summarize I think there's three things um, the whole predictability thing um, number two, I think maybe don't be so, or you should stop being so overly simplistic with real life examples. And number three, you should make a video talking about randomness and how that could possibly relate to free will. But like you say, no amount of, no amount of shoulds is going to add up. That joke really makes no sense. Anyway. Okay. Thanks.